Hi there folks, welcome back to the channel and thank you very much for joining me once again. Well, we've had a short break, a couple of weeks, and thought we'd get back to some interesting kits. Now, it did occur to me recently, two things. One, we have had a lot of British planes, uh, the last three or four I think were British planes, uh, and some of our American cousins, of which we have many subscribers from US and Canada, um, and Germany might have been getting a bit annoyed at me and thinking, well, it's all British stuff from the 1960s. What about us? Yeah. So, let's redress the balance today. We're going to talk about the Hasegawa F104C Starfighter in 48 scale. Uh, and I'm going to try not to get into trouble again like last time because I made a lot of very harsh comments and jokes about Starfighter, of which I am not a fan, I have to be honest. Not one of my favourite American planes. Um, we're going to be doing a plane uh, perhaps uh, in the very near future that I am a big favourite of, but that, that is later. Now, uh, I was told off because somebody said that I was being very uh, discriminatory and cracking a lot of uh, cheap gags and uh, cheap shots. And uh, it, Do you know what? I think he was probably right. <laughs> because obviously this plane has got a bit of a history. Starfighter was introduced in the late 50s. And uh, obviously it was designed to be a very high performance high level intercept for Britain, like, similar to the British Lightning was, same same job. Um, but unlike the British Lightning, this thing was not a great uh, aircraft at low level, it wasn't very manoeuvrable, it was very hard to control, uh, it's got a lot of odd um, sort of idi idiosyncrasies within the way that it manoeuvres and it's really a handful. And there were a lot of very, very sad fatal accidents with this aeroplane, which is one of the reasons I have been a bit sarcastic about it. Um, especially in Germany, the Germans call it the widow maker. Um, somebody um, actually agreed with my joking and jossing and said, I think it was a German guy, and he said, uh, he said, uh, what, what do you do? Uh, how do you how do you catch a starfighter? Catch a, catch a falling starfighter, put it in your garden, it'll drop out of the sky sooner or later, or words to that effect. Basically alleging that, you know, if you buy a plot of land in Germany in the... Uh, early, late 60s, early 70s, a starfighter will eventually drop into it and crash. <laughs> a little bit harsh, but there were lots of crashes and, uh, yeah, uh, the, the Luftwaffe were not huge fans of it, but but it was a very high performance plane. Now, to redress the balance, so, so I don't get too negative again about it, uh, there is a video on YouTube, which I've just seen, just a couple of days ago, and it's really impressive, and it's a starfighter, I think it's a German Luftwaffe one, it takes off and does an immediate barrel roll under full laughter burner and then lands again and puts it just deploys the parachute and lands on the same pass down the runway. So it's obviously a, a big runway, a massive runway somewhere in Germany. But I was impressed and I thought, hmm, okay, so that was a low level and that was quite impressive. So I'm not going to be too negative about it. But let's have a look at what Hasegar have got to offer. We know they've done some other nice ones like the um, the Phantom and the uh, the Jaguar reviewed, which were both nice kits. So I think it'd be okay. Let's have a look then. So kit number is 0719. I'm going to zoom you in so you can see this side of the box here. We have got a photograph of a finished kit, which actually looks rather rather nicely done. In fairness, I'm not a fan of this sort of thing, but they do look good if they've been well built. Looks good, doesn't it? Right, made in Japan, of course. That's a go. Well, let's crack on and have a look what's inside the box. Um, now, I'm reliably told there's some extra goodies in here. So, uh, any of you that have bought this kit or are buying it or going to buy it or maybe in the future, do do listen up because I'm not an expert on this, but I've been briefed. There's some stuff in here you might want to consider. So, let me pop that over there. Uh, here we have the first bit of goodies. We've got a bag with all the screws in. It's sealed, but I am told I must open it to show you, so that's good. We've got some resin air res intakes, engine pipes. We've got some more air res wheel bays. We've got some nice Edouard goodies and some decals. Right. Now then, I think what I'll do, I'll re I'm going to do this the other way around. The right way, you might argue. I'm going to review the kit first and then we'll look at the extras and then it'll make more sense, I think. So I'm going to put the extras all to one side and we'll just get into the basic kit uh, first. That will give us some context, I think, to judge them by. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. So, 
I always start with the decals, so let's do that. Um, quite nice decals indeed. Uh, nice and bright, these are. Uh, Hasegawa do their own. Um, you will notice there's maybe a little bit, maybe they go a little bit OTT by modern standards, a little bit OTT with the carrier film, not, not too bad, nothing, not terrible at all. Just a little bit more, perhaps a millimetre or two more you might, you might not want. You see it? Uh, several areas, you might want to just get the scalpel in here. And maybe just to avoid any silvering, let's just see it there. Yeah, a little bit of extra carrier film, a bit too generously done perhaps. But they're nicely printed as ever, very bright, very sharp, good print registration. Oh, lovely. Strategic Air Command. Wow. And the Tactical Air Command as well. Look at that. I've got here the instrumentation decals. I've got some more there with all the panels and switches down the side. Not really a fan of that, I've got to be honest, having decals for the actual side switches, but I think that's going to be corrected with the Edward kit. We'll see later. So, they look very nice in fairness. And let's have a look at the instructions and see what it's all about. So, zoom you out so you can see what it's all going. USAF, there we go, Mach 2. You can fly faster than Mach 2. Yep, maiden flight 54. 2259 kilometres an hour, wow. Yeah, ultra thin wings designed to minimise aerodynamic drag. Um, Mm -hmm. Now there is a problem with this kit which I'm going to tell you about more in a second but it concerns the wings and we'll talk about that as we get to it. So typical Hasegawa, it sort of starts off straight away, no messing about at all. Straight into the build where we've got, you're building up your ejection seats. Uh, which don't look too bad actually, but I know we have a, a resin replacement from Quick Boost. Then you've got your exhaust manifold and afterburner ring at the back, flame holder. Then you've got your wheel, uh, main gear well uh, assembly, because it has one great big um, gear well for both sides. And the gear, of course, on this aircraft is, is mounted into the fuselage, not into the wing. Very conventional stuff here. It's uh, two halves coming together and all these little modules you've built up go in there. And then you put the underside of the nose on. And then we move on to creating all the, the furniture, so to speak, on the outside of the nose. So you put your instruments and the instrument coving on, and you've got your air intakes. I hope those are going to be a good fit, because that's often a, a problem area. Then you've got the nose. Oh, no. OK, here's a problem straight away, uh, or a potential one. Oh, I don't be too high. Um, yeah, the nose in two halves, I don't like that. That's not... I hate that, actually. You know, noses, you know, in the modern world, today. We really need these to be slide moulded if necessary but they should be in one piece because otherwise you're going to end up with a seam and a lot of messing about and correcting. Anyway, then we move on to the wing and this is one of the areas of the plane that we uh, may have some difficulties with uh, and again I'll talk in more detail when we see the plastic. Then you've got your rudder and your tailplane going on. Uh, tailplane stroke elevator is isn't it really. The whole thing moves of course. Uh, it's a bit like the Buccaneer in that respect, the, the Starfighter, of course. You've got air brakes, and you're going to need them. <laughs> Get this thing to slow down. <laughs> I mean, I didn't make my usual joke did I, about the eject seat. I was very kind, you know, I should have said the most vital part of the aircraft, the eject seat. Because it's the one you're probably going to use every couple of weeks. <laughs> Obviously, I'll probably only once in truth, but anyway. Per plane. <laughs> anyway, uh, nose gear is going in, in the uh, under the front of the nose, the main uh, nose leg, which you build up over here. And then you've got this rather strange twist and turn main gear assembly. I think it twists and turns in opposite directions, I can't remember. Um, I'm sure the experts out there will shout and say. Uh, it kind of folds up toward the front, doesn't it, ultimately? And then you've got missile launchers underneath, which go right under the nose there. See that? Uh, nope, missed it. There we go. Missile launches. Uh, and then you've got your bay doors going on, drop tanks, 
uh, the exhaust ring and then finally you bring your your wing tanks in a bit too much here bring in your, your wing tanks and your canopy just to top it off and your refueling probe as well and that is that so on the back you've got um, sprue uh, sort of sprue tree map so to speak and then um, all the various guides for paints and then the paint guide itself is on the back and you can do some great things with this in terms of the uh, the metal finishes obviously that would be something that you can really play around with doing different effects uh, plenty of decals it has to be said there's quite a lot of uh, stencils as well but it's a, it's a curious plane isn't it I said in my uh, matchbox review of the Starfighter I said look it looks like a missile with some stubby fins on it I mean really from a distance it looks like a missile rather than an aircraft doesn't it <laughs> but anyway it was very fast of course and that seems to be it right okay so that's the decals uh, instructions now then let's have a look at this properly I'm going to get my trusty knife I'm going to open the bags and I'm going to zoom you in nice and close so you can see exactly what we're talking about um, very much an old school bag this one oh yeah Off the sprue. Hmm. I don't care for the single bag. Very airfix, isn't it? Old school airfix. The the new Vulcan, and hopefully in the future they won't be doing that. But um, yeah. So anyway, let's lay these out. So we've got it's very old school. This isn't it? It's uh, two. Everything's halves. You know, straight down the middle. What's coming off? So. Where do we begin? Let's start with this. Those are just two sides, so we'll just pop that over there, bring you into this. It's going to be quite a big model, this, of course, because it's a big old long plane, isn't it? Starfighter. Now then. Right. Well, there's some quite good detail. It's very finely done. Very fine rivet detail on the tail there. And along the fuselage as well. Um, some lots of panel lines, hatches. Those, uh, those are nice. Yeah, that's quite nice. I don't like that nose though. I don't like that split nose. Uh, why couldn't they made it in one piece? But anyway, I think it's quite an old. How old is it actually? I didn't check that, did I? I've got a feeling this is not not brand new. Do we have a date on it? Made in Japan. Don't think they're going to tell us, to be honest. Don't think it says. Oh, yes, it does. 2005. Hmm. Okay, so it's 16 year old. Uh, I don't know if it actually says on the inside of the moulding. Doesn't seem to. But um, yeah, there's some good detail. I'm just going to show you some parts I haven't really shown you underneath here. It's uh, it's got some very fine little access hatches and panels. No, they've done it quite well, I just don't like that now. Anyway, we'll move on. Now, come to an important point now. We have got... Uh, there's two options, actually, for whether you have it with or without the the wing tanks. And here, here is the wing without the wing tanks. But there's a problem. And it is, the wings themselves have got all of this riveted detail. Can you see that? Now... On the Starfighter, in fact, um, apart from the prototype, I think, they were, they were like the Mustang, they'd putted the, the wings. So they were putted over the rivets to make it completely smooth, because they needed this to be very low drag, you know. It's a high level interceptor, it's going to take off and go vertical and climb up as quickly as possible to intercept any threat to the Ameri United States, you know, mainland. So... That's no, no, that's not right. That's not right. Now, this is where we'll see these extra parts later because the other variant is the you've got two options here. Um, I am also reliably informed that the tailplane elevator or tailplane, whatever you're going to call it, isn't quite right, it's not quite big enough. So, that's going to get corrected with some of this aftermarket. But if you look at the, the alternative, whoops, 
I'm seeing you out so you see what's going on a bit better. So there's this alternative set which has design with the rails on the end of the wings. And again, lots and lots of rivets on the wings. That's not correct. So that's not actually scale and correct. No, because all that, all that would do on the real aircraft is cause tons and tons of drag and vortices um, and it would just not give it the slippery, you know, low CD factor that it needs to really do its job. So, yeah, we've got some other parts that have got rivets on, which is fine on the air brakes and things. That's no problem, but, but not on this. Um, and then we've got the rudder. There's the rudder. There and there. But those are not quite right. So that's going to get corrected in this kit by getting yourself some uh, upgrade set from a company called Deco. We'll come to that in a minute. We'll talk about that later. Meantime, we've got your jet pipe. Inside your jet pipe, we've got your wheels. And the moulding of Hasegawa is always very, very nice. Very sharp. Nice and crisp. No flashiness, you know. All done very nice. You've got your missile rails there. And wheels, obviously tyres, parts of the front uh, undercarriage, that's very good. Then we have, oh, we have a, another little hatch piece that's off the sprue. We'll pop in the box very carefully. Here we've got our refuelling probe. Air to air refuelling. Looks like a bit of an afterthought, if I'm honest. But well, again, it kind of is an afterthought. Now here is where it and the Lightning have got this same common problem of high fuel consumption and need to be on patrol perhaps for extended periods at high altitude and therefore they had to bolt on a refuelling probe. It's like, it's like nobody thought of it at the beginning. Same with the Lightning. You know, the Lightning later models of the F2A, I think it was, where they start putting on refuelling probes. Uh, and for the model subsequent. So, hmm, yes, it's a um, thirsty beast. Thirsty beast. Nicely moulded though. Oops. Got one or two bits of plastic that really are just bits of dead spring, so I just ignore that. Now then, we've got some lovely, this jet pipe is nice, isn't it, at the back? Looks pretty good to me. And we've got some lovely detail here. Look at this. This is the uh, front gear well, gear bay well. Lovely detail, little um, vents just behind it, look. That's really been nicely done. Yeah, that's a nice, nice bit of uh, detailing. And then we've got our uh, wingtip tanks. And then the other one. Again, they're split at, you know, split 50-50, so you've got potential seams, so you're going to have to be careful with it. Uh, <clears throat> and then we've got various trim flaps and fins underneath. That's, that's very nicely moulded, I like that. So far so good. Then we have another, I think there may be two variants here, what looks like another exhaust pipe, um, final jet pipe. So, hmm, that's interesting isn't it? Very nicely moulded. Look at that. That's very, very crisp. Super duper. And then you've got your inside of your main gear bay. And now this is curious because we saw those decals with the instruments for either side and yet it's actually raised. So how are you supposed to get those decals to sit on top of that? I don't I don't understand the logic there. They've made a bit of a boo-boo. It's one or the other, isn't it? You're gonna have a decal, you have a decal, but you can't have a decal that's gonna go have a raised switches, because we all know what happens there silvering happens and it just sits on top so I think I think in this case we've got some nice goodies that are going to erase that but we'll go to that now just to prove the point yes we have we've got the Edward set here uh, FE 222 set and this indeed will get rid of your problem by you just cut off that raised detail and you've got your switches and panels at the side here. And those look really, really crisp, don't they? Yeah. That's nice. Typical Edward, well up to their usual quality. 
Okay, and then on the main kit we've just got one grey sprue left, which is almost going to become two sprues and not careful here because it's trying to part company. This one is on its last leg as you can probably see. So we've got more wheels and tyres. We've got the other side of the main jet pipe in toward the back. Lots of little parts, uh, part of the um, seat, jet seat. And then we've got various parts of the undercarriage, actuators uh, and the intake for the engine, which looks really nice, I have to say. Here. That's gorgeous. Really crisp. Very convincing. And that's before you painted it. It's a nice depth to it there. And you get your flame holder for the afterburner at the back. I just know this sprue's going to come off my hand any second. And then you've got your very beefy <coughs> main undercarriage there in the middle. Support legs, and you've got your front uh, oleo legs for the front uh, nose wheel, and of course your instrument panel, which again it's got raised details on it. You're going to have to put a decal over. I don't, I don't understand what they're trying to do there. That doesn't make any sense at all. But obviously the Edward set makes all that redundant anyway. So I'm going to try and gently put that down so it doesn't part company. Success. Now then, let us now have a little book at uh, for those of you who are not from the British Isles, uh, having a butcher's just means you're having a look. Okay. <laughs> Don't ask me where it comes from, I've no idea. It's a very old expression. So look at this clear parts then. Okay, so hmm. Mm. I'm not too impressed. Um, I would say they're not particularly clear and there's quite a lot of distortion actually visible. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. There's quite a lot of yeah distortion. Uh, more than I expected. Uh, the front windscreen is not so bad. That's actually not too bad. It's the main canopy, especially on this side where my finger is. It's a bit distorted and a bit, a bit of a mess actually. Um, yeah, and if you get it at a low angle, I don't know if you can make this out. Can you see how it almost looks like a boiled sweet? It's got that sort of crazing in it. It's not a great bit of clear work, I've got to be honest. The back uh, window, so to speak, behind the opening canopy, that's not too bad. Um, but overall, a bit disappointed with that, if I'm honest. Hmm. Uh, I don't recall the other Hasegawa kits having uh, bad, bad clarity or quite so much distortion as that. But I think it's not the end of the world. Now, some extras. Let's see what we've got here then. So we've got the quick boost ejection seat. What did I say? It's the most important part of the aeroplane, especially for the pilot, because he's going to be using this sooner or later. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. But that's a nicely figured ejector seat. Um, and it shows you how, I'm going to move it across a bit. It shows you how sort of thin the seat is. There. It's quite, um, it's quite a subtle sort of... Uh, lightweight arrangement this ejector seat isn't it especially at the shoulder area they've melded that beautifully that's a nice one yeah i like that super what else we got show me more ah now then master models who make these beautiful turned pieces got the pitot tube for the nose here and it looks beautiful again turned in brass that is very very nice And if I can get it nice and sharp. There we go. Yeah, that's lovely. Always looks better than a plastic one because you just can't get, you know, a mould fine enough to match metal. Yeah, they actually turn these on a lathe of some description. Um, it's quite impressive and it comes with the nice instructions as well to help you. Not really much instructions for that particular one. Now then. 
Um, we have got some um, interesting, from cutting edge, we've got some rather interesting alternative decals where we've got a uh, set here, we've got a high level interceptor, what looks like a Vietnam sort of, certainly in terms of camera style, and then we've got the Canadian, because of course Canadians bought Starfighters as well. Uh, in fact, I forgot that they were quite a big use of the Starfighter indeed. Um, nice uh, colour call out sheet, so to speak. Um, oh, there we go, it's the 1972 Tiger Meat. Okay. It's got some chipped paint that they're pointing out, that's good. And then we've got the one that set the world altitude record of 103,000 feet. My God, what's that? 20 miles or 20, 20? It's 20 miles up. Oh my God, that is, that's incredible. Wow, it's more than 20 miles, that's 21 miles up? 21 miles above the, the Earth's surface, jeez. And the other one is actually based in Thailand in 68, so I like the scheme actually, the camera. It's a bit unusual for a Starfighter, I quite like. Yeah, that's quite nicely done, isn't it? Um, and you've got a little bit more data on the back showing how to do the camo set. And then we've got the, uh, the decals themselves. Now then, I'm trusting that these are just conventional decals, not like these uh, Rather strange ones that Edward have come out with recently where you have film on the top. But um, no, it's just a conventional one. So, we seem to have got some nice Canadian maple leaves. And uh, we've got our American stars and bars. Uh, yeah, just some alternative squadrons and things, isn't it? They're very nice though, um, sized up correctly. And a nice colour sheet to help you with your painting. Now then, some more extras. We have got the Ares uh, exhaust nozzles complete with flame holder in brass and the rest is in resin and this is really nice. Although I have to say I thought the one in the kit was actually quite good. Uh, it was very sharply moulded so it's not, it's definitely better this but it's not absolutely night and day so you don't have to get this if you don't want to, can't afford it or whatever. But uh, air resist stuff is always really, really nice. So you won't go wrong with that. Just gives you that little extra level of detail. It's like the uh, cherry on top of the cake, isn't it really? Okay, so that's that. And then finally, in terms of the uh, resin parts, we've got the main wheel base set. So that's... Uh, yeah, I seem to recall that wasn't perhaps the best part of the kit, so this is going to make a whole difference, I think. Lots of detail there. I can avoid the reflections. There we go. Nice, very lots of pipes and hydraulics, clockwork and machinery going on in there. Same for the front, that's the front, if you can make that out, the front bay. And then you've got a couple of, uh, is it the cannons? I think that's the cannons, my eyes don't deceive me. Underneath, anyway. Now last but not least. Uh, I've, got, I've got to say that um, Asagawa are one of the better manufacturers, I think. They're in the top 50%, aren't they, for sure. Um, but that clear parts was a bit... It looked like something from a bygone age, you know. 2005 though, I'd expect it to be a little bit better than that. Now, this is the important thing. Um, this is extras that the owner has bought from Deco. Uh, now Deco do a, a whole range of injection moulded, not resin, injection moulded parts. And um, I think they do some brass as well, um, some uh, photo etch. And they're trying to correct this problem I spoke about. Yeah, here we go. So we've got, it looks, looks like the part of the kit, but it's not. It's actually extra as this. And what it is essentially is, oh, they actually interlock together. That's quite clever, isn't it? I always like it when manufacturers actually think about these things. Get them out without doing any damage. There we go. It's a bit tricky. Don't break it, don't break it. It's got one that's been a bit sticky. Doesn't want to come out. Well, that one's gone back in now. It certainly, it certainly works. 
done it. I've done it. Just press it like that. Let it get attached. There we go. Right now, I spoke about the tailplane, didn't I? It not being quite the right size, which I think we can see. If I could just see it out, yeah, it's right at the bottom, isn't it? There. We go. Here's the kit, and this is the aftermarket in my right hand. So actually, if we look very, very carefully. Um, well, it's, it's also the rivets, okay, so the rivets were on, on the tailplane as well. So we have got, I don't, know, I don't know that the shape looks any different to me, to my eye, but it, there's no rivets. There's no rivets. I thought it was odd to have all these rivets on a plane, it, it's supposed to be Mac 2 Plus. Uh, even the Russians learned to, you know, to putty them up. You can clearly see on the wing here, that the rivets are all gone and it's almost smooth. Yes there's access hatches and things but there's no rivets. Because rivets equal drag on a, an aircraft at this performance. You don't want any of that. And as I say on the tail gone as well. So all the parts that got rivets on basically on the flying surfaces have been altered and it includes Interestingly, it also includes the, uh, the flaps and the slats and the ailerons. They've also got, this one that's moving now has got no rivets on it. And this one is from the kit and it has. So that's what they've done. They've got rid of all the rivets and the ones. There's also Deco product set 148 scale Starfighter improvement set. There you go. And we've also got um, so it looks like a flame holder here, and we've got various parts of the ejection seat. I think that's the headrest actually. There, and all sorts of other. Yes, there's the there's the rest of the ejection seat here. The, the, the owner for this kit has got all sorts of options. He's got the kit. He's got this deco set. And he's got the air race, uh, sorry, quick boost seat. And again, on you can see here, the minimization of any riveting. It's all potted away, smoothed off. The only contours you've got are the little access panels and hatches. And then you get your pylons for, okay, so that's, that's alternative pylons for under the wings. I think that's additional drop tank, if I'm not mistaken. No tanks included there. And you get this rather nice, uh, very clear, I have to say, instruction leaflet that comes with it. Um, oh yes, I'm so sorry, I didn't realise that some of this, um, okay, some of this that I didn't actually realise what I was looking at, if I'm quite honest. It's actually different pilot's helmets, at the bottom right there. A selection of them, different versions, different designs. Germany, helmet for Germany, helmet for Canada, helmet for Italy. Yeah, the Italians had the plane, I forgot that. A lot of um, different visors as well, visor up, visor down. And here, these are the visors here, different variants of the visor. So that's really amazing. And then we've got the, is that the gear door or the air brakes? I think this is the air brakes. It does look nicer than the kit. I've got to, I can see the attraction here, definitely. Very nice. Uh, and then there's also, um, Canopy defogging tubing, so that's basically a heating system thing for the canopy, and that's that's all these parts that you see here. Just put that for a second. All this like a weird framework. It's the canopy defogging system. So it's basically like a heated radiator for your canopy. Um, amazing. <laughs> and then we've got the drag sheet bay. The all important drag sheet to slow you down and stop. And then we've got the uh, used in a combination of the Hasegawa parts and the parts from this kit. You can create your own afterburner, flame holder, and igniter set. And that's it. So that's actually very nice. I've got to say, I can see the attraction there. No problem. Just definitely got the edge over the kit that has. So quite a lot to see there, wasn't there? 
I've had to put this back on wrong as per usual. So, zoom you out, see what else going on. Try and bring lots of this kit back. I'm going to take me an hour to read part of this one, I can tell you, so I'll do that later. Okay? So, F104 Starfighter, the Widowmaker. <laughs> My favourite, isn't it? Um, I think that it's a very nice kit actually. I think that it's a let down a bit by the clear parts, which I thought a bit naff. Don't seem to be uh, almost like they're from a different era to the rest of it. Don't like the split, the way they've done the sort of fuselage and the nose, but I suppose that still very much the Vogue in 2005. Thankfully, soon th after that, things started to change. But um, the moulding is really nice, and there's no flash, nothing nasty that I can see. You might have to work a bit on your canopy to clean it up and try and. It's not very clear, it's quite a foggy looking canopy to me. Um, but obviously with all these aftermarket parts you're going to upgrade it nicely. Uh, I think I'd give it eight. Eight, eight. eight and a half? Go on then, I'll go to eight and a half I think, that would be fair. Eight and a half out of ten, it would have got nine and a half if it hadn't had the clear parts being so, so grim. Um, and of course it's got the, this riveting problem, so it's kind of annoying if you just bought this kit and you realise it's got it's got this riveting which actually wasn't on the the aircraft in service. And I don't even think you see the rivets on the, the artwork, which tells you everything, doesn't it, really? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go 8.5 out of 10. I think it's a bit on the generous side, but I think we'll go with that. As for these other items, they help it a lot, I think. I'll really lift it. So, so there you have it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you'll give me 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up. Um, I'm going to be doing maybe another American, uh, some, another aircraft that I'm going to be a lot more enthusiastic about, I think, very soon, and maybe something that might be this and that aircraft's opponent. Something massive is coming soon. So keep your eyes peeled, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you again. And in the meantime, before the next vid, thank you very much for joining me uh, and for your time. Please comment, please like share and subscribe if you haven't already and if you have subscribed ding the notification bell to make sure that you get early warning of the next vid when it comes up and in the meantime till next time stay safe thanks for joining me thanks a lot and bye for now